If you are just joining me today, we are in the middle of a study of 1 Corinthians. And in particularly today, Paul is speaking to those who are married, single, widowed, or divorced. So if you fall into one of those categories, Paul has a word for you. So if you would grab your Bible, I'm reading in the Holman Christian Standard Version, and let's begin reading. It says this in chapter 7, verse 1, about the things you wrote. Now we know Paul has been in correspondence with the Corinthian church because it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, I wrote to you in a letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. Here, he's saying about the things you wrote. So the Corinthian church, the church at Corinth, wrote Paul and had some, some questions for him, and Paul is dealing with those. So let's begin reading here. It is good for man not to have relations with a woman. It is good for man not to have relations with a woman, but, there's a big but, but because of sexual immorality, Each man should have his own wife, and each woman should have her own husband. A husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise a wife to her husband. Verse 4, a wife does not have authority over her own body, but her husband does. Equally, don't miss it, equally a husband does not have authority over his own body, but his wife does. Verse 5, if you've got a red pen or marker right there with you, you're going to need it. Look, do not deprive one another, except when you agree for a time to devote yourselves to prayer. You can read a lot of books on marriage, but this might be a good place to start. Don't deprive one another except for if you agree for a short time for prayer. Okay, then come together again. Otherwise, otherwise, why do you need to come together again? Otherwise, Satan may tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command. I wish that all people were just like me unmarried or not married, but each has his own gift from God, one this and another that. I'm so glad Paul brings this up because Paul understood that for him to be able to stay uh, not married, he it was a gift for him to be able to do that. Not everyone is called to that. Verse 8, I say to the unmarried and to the widows, here's a message to the unmarried and widows, it is good then if they, re- if they remain as I am, unmarried. But if they do not have self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with desire. Verse 10, I command the married, well, not I, but the Lord, This is the Lord's commandment to the married. A wife is not to leave her husband, but if she does leave, she must remain remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. That's easy. If a wife leaves her husband, she must remain unmarried or be reconciled back with her husband. And a husband must not leave his wife. But to the rest, I, not the Lord, this is Paul's opinion, Paul's thoughts. If any brother has an unbelieving wife and she is willing to live with him, he must not leave her. Also, if any woman has an unbelieving husband and he is willing to live with her, she must not leave her husband. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the Christian husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. Let me take just a moment for that comment here. Notice we are not talking about salvation. Paul makes it very clear that that they are unbelieving. But what he is saying here is 
is that unbelieving spouse and kids are under the umbrella of blessing and provision and protection of the Lord, of the believing spouse. An example of this is the Jewish nation in the Old Testament. They weren't all saved, but yet God, because they were His nation, His chosen people, He had a protection, a provision for them. He blessed them as a nation. And one of the worst things that could happen to a person, a Jew, would be for them to be kicked out from among their people because then they would no longer be under that umbrella of protection and provision and blessing of the Lord on that people. And I believe it's the same concept here. The unsaved are able to be under that umbrella of the protection and vision, uh, provision and what God provides through the believing spouse. Okay, I hope I communicated that okay. If not, message me, text me, email me, and I'll see if I can do better for you. Verse 15, but if the unbeliever leaves, let him leave. A brother or a sister is not bound in such cases. God has called you to peace. For you, wife, how do you know whether you will save your husband? Or you, husband, how do you know whether you will save your wife? This is coming from a man who was called to share the gospel. He's saying, stay with that unbelieving spouse because how do you know if you might not save him? All right, verse 17, moving on. However, Each one must live his life in the situation the Lord assigned when God called him. There's that word called, circle it. Now, what does Paul mean here that he must live his life in the situation that the Lord has assigned? We'll look at it. This is what I command in all the churches. Was anyone already circumcised when he was called? He should not undo his circumcision. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? He should not get circumcised. Why? Verse 19, circumcision does not matter and uncircumcision does not matter, but keeping God's commandments does. Each person should remain in the life situation in which he was called. Our second topic here, were you called while a slave? It should not be a concern to you, but you can become free. But if you become free, by all means, take the opportunity. For he who is called by the Lord as a slave is the Lord's free man. Likewise, he who is called as a free man is Christ's slave. So just stay in the situation where you're in if you are with... And this is what Paul is talking about, circumcision and slavery. So if you're called while circumcised, don't become uncircumcised. If you're called while uncircumcised, don't become circumcised. Stay where you are. If you're a slave, you're a slave, but you're free in Christ. And if you're free in Christ... You become Christ's slave, so they're equal. Okay, verse 23, you were bought at a price. What was the price that we were bought with? Not with silver, not with gold, but with Christ's blood. Each person should remain with God in whatever situation he is called. And in this, Paul was talking about circumcision and slavery. Verse 25, about virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, but I do give an opinion as one who is by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. So Paul has a message for virgins and he says, it's, it's not a command from the Lord, but it's for me and I am trustworthy by God's grace. Therefore, I consider this to be good because of the present distress. It is fine for a man to stay as he is. What's he talking about? Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be loosed. Are you loosed from a wife? Do not seek a wife. However, 
So stay again, stay in the situation. You were called. If you are in a relationship, stay there. If you're not, stay there, Paul says. However, if you do get married, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. But, listen to what Paul says, but such people will have trouble in this life. And he says, I am, tr- I am trying to spare you. Don't you love that? Paul just says it as it is. He says, I'm just telling you, if you do get married, you haven't sinned, but such people are going to have trouble in this life. And I'm just trying to spare you that trouble. Thanks, Paul. All right, verse 29. I say this, brothers, the time is limited. So from now on, those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who buy as though they did not possess. And those who use the world as though they did not make full use of it. For this world in its current form is passing away. Meaning no matter where you are, what situation you're in, married or unmarried, this life is going to go by so quickly. More or less, make sure you're living for the Lord. Verse 32, I want you to be without concerns. An unmarried man is concerned about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. We get that. A married man has got to have concerns of the world, how he can please his wife. Verse 34, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is concerned about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Now, I'm saying this for your own benefit, not to put a restraint on you, but because of what is proper and so that you may be devoted to the Lord without distraction. But if any man thinks he is acting improperly toward his virgin, if she is past marriageable age, and so it must be, he can do what he wants. He is not sinning, they can get married. But he who stands firm in his heart, who is under no compulsion, but has control over his own will, and has decided in his heart to keep his own virgin, will do well. So then, he who marries his virgin does well, but he who does not marry will do better. Finishing this out in verse 39, we're almost done. A wife is bound as long as her husband is living. But if her husband dies, she is free to be married to anyone she wants, but only in the Lord. Verse 40, but she is happier, listen, but she is happier if she remains as she is. In my opinion, this is Paul's opinion, and I think that I also have the Spirit of God. Do you know what Paul's opinion is in all this? In marriage and being unmarried is this, you do well if you marry, but you do even better if you don't for the reasons Paul describes, because you can be focused on the Lord and not the things of this world trying to please your spouse. Oh my goodness, I love this. Go back, reread this. I'm so glad you joined me today, and I'll see you next week for chapter eight. It's a whole new topic. See you then.